Yes, that's right. Mortgage rates are dropping. Well, we don't mean right now because right now they're going through the roof. But when we get into a recession, rates will drop. We're going to take you back through time on a quick trip so you can see what happened in the last seven recessions to mortgage interest rates. Hey there, Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates. We have been helping buyers and sellers make the best data-driven decisions in this crazy market. Look, we understand that rates have gone up quickly. We will see that that has happened in the past as well. Now, despite today's news while I'm shooting this, that the GDP was up and we're probably not in a recession, there's a lot of people who feel like we are. And of course, there's a good chance we may go into one as the Fed continues to use their sledgehammer to correct the market by destroying the housing market. So if you're ready to dive into mortgage interest rates in the past seven recessions, hit that like button and let's get started. Here we go, diving into the 30-year mortgage rate going all the way back to 1970. And the reason we start in 1970 is that's when Freddie Mac was created under the Emergency Home Finance Act passed by Congress. So there is a recession going on then. And you can see all these gray bands, just like in the video we released earlier in the week, talking about values during recessions. These gray bands are the recessions. They're missing 1970 because they were created in that recession, so they don't have that. And they're missing COVID. They don't have the two to three month-ish recession then, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and dive in on that anyway. So let's get in closer and see exactly what happened to rates. And we just stepped into the DeLorean, or maybe we just stepped out of the DeLorean. Here we are in the 1970s. Again, we don't have the recession data for the 1970, but we do have the mid 70s recession. Back then, everybody was kung fu fighting and we had a recession all at the same time. It was crazy, crazy times. Thank God we're not living in those days. But you can see just before the recession, we had rates go uh, peak at almost 9%. They then dropped. And then as we went into the recession, rates dropped and they continued to drop until it got to about March of 74. And then they took a big increase. And that may sound familiar to what happened in 2022. Around that time, that's when we saw rates increase. So they went to from about 8.4 all the way up to over 10. So that was just under a 2% increase in a short time through September. So we're already beyond that in our increases, but if we have a similar curve, now we're not in a recession right now, theoretically, if we have a similar curve, we can expect that rates are going to drop because that's what happened in this recession. Rates then dropped and they continue to go down through the end of the recession. The recession was over and they dropped a little bit more. Now, not as low as where they were during their lowest period in the recession, which is interesting. So it actually would have been better to put your financing in place a few months into the recession, but rates went up, dropped down, then increased a little bit after the recession and actually increased more. So that is what happened in the mid 70s. Let's keep the DeLorean moving through time. Moving into the lovely recessions of the 80s. So in the early 80s, just the beginning, we see we had a quick recession. All out of love and all out of love for low interest rates. Interest rates were almost at 13 going in to the first early recession and they got up to 16.35. You can see another dramatic increase. Let's see how quickly that was from February, March, all the way into April. So in three months, the interest rate went up that quickly and then it dropped and it plummeted and it was lower than before the recession. So it got down to 12, which sounds ridiculous, but that's what they dealt with in the 80s. These high interest rates because of high inflation. And they went out of one recession and rode rates on up into another. And Steve Miller bans Abra, Abra Cadabra could not save them from the magic of another recession. So rates marched up and hit their peak, one of the highest peaks. And yeah, this is the peak, 18.63% in October of 1981. Crazy high interest rates. My dad was a custom home builder in Ohio at the time, building homes for people. They were talking about interest rates and they thought for sure, if they could just get those interest rates down to 10%, boy, the floodgates would open up. 
Well, that didn't happen anytime in this recession. We can see it peaked quickly. So just a couple months into that recession, rates peaked, dropped, uh, got everybody excited apparently. Nope, going back up, <laughs> down, down, and finally plummeted. So by the end of 1982, rates were down, lower than where they were at the beginning of the recession. So they peaked early on a couple months into this recession. This recession, like we talked about in a previous video, very similar to where we are now. A lot of similarities between this one and our current recession because of high inflation. And before we get to the recession in the 90s, let me show you exactly when rates got below 10% so that the floodgates could open for homes that my dad was building. And it wasn't until 1986, we can see it dropped. It got below in April, 1986 got below 10% and then promptly went back up. And then it went finally in August and stayed below 10%. Also, the same year, one of my favorite movies, The Three Amigos, came out. Although I should probably rewatch it. It's probably completely politically incorrect today, but I laughed when I was a kid. And now getting into the era I grew up, the 90s. So, nice recession, right around the time of the Humpty Dance. You know, Humpty Dance made us happy while we were going through this. A great classic song. We can see that rates kind of went up and down as we got into the recession after first dropping before the recession. They went under 10%, then promptly went back up, then dropped through the end of the recession. So the drop in interest rates occurred about three or four months into that recession. And the rates continued to drop, went up a little bit, but then went to their lowest level. Came out at the other side at the mid nines which is a crazy number, even by today's standards. We finally got into the noughties or the 2000s, depending on what you wanted to call them. Rates were dropping, and then even though Jennifer Lopez said in 2001 that love don't cost a thing, she was right, but recessions do. Unfortunately, the dot-com boom became the dot-com bust, and we had also a very tragic event of September 11th. That led us into this recession. Rates weren't as crazy as we saw. We didn't see the dramatic ups and downs, and they dropped by the end of this recession. It was a relatively quick and shallow recession, it's been called, because it didn't push us too far down, and we were able to bounce back from this recession. And then the recession of all recessions, the Great Recession hits, some of you may remember this, and most of you may remember this, although I guess at this point in time, some of you are too young to even know about this one. Crazy times, global financial crisis, and you can see interest rates were all over. In fact, Flo Rida and T-Pain were singing about low, great song, but interest rates didn't get low until the very end of this longer recession. They finally dropped to under 5%. Once we came out of the recession, it was declared over. And I remember at the end of this, they said, okay, it's over. And I guess technically it was over. It didn't feel like it was over for me anyway. And rates promptly spiked at that point in time up over five. So this was a crazy time. But here's what's interesting. What happened after that rates went up a little bit, as I mentioned just after, and then they continued to drop. And then, and oh, by the way, I got to mention the scale changes as you scroll through this. As the number gets smaller, it also gets smaller over there. So that changes things. We got to five again, but then they dropped. In fact, they dropped to their lowest levels they had ever been. And in 2012, we saw rates in the threes. And anybody who's watched my channel may know that we've talked about 2012 as an important time because at that time, the market turned. It was spring of 2012 when multiple offers started to get crazy. A bunch of buyers came back to the market and it was because of interest rates at that point in time. They then continued to stay low for the most part until we got to, well, today. And the most recent recession is actually not a gray bar on here. You can see this is during COVID where rates spiked. It's a teeny tiny spike. And then they promptly dropped and stayed low. 
until we get here to today where we're over 7%. So now that we've taken a trip through the different recessions, what are your thoughts? Did you notice the patterns that I saw? One pattern being that interest rates tend to quickly rise and then drop and often drop significantly in a recession. So while interest rates are high right now and may continue to go up, once we get into a recession, and it could be just a month or two into the recession like we saw, mortgage interest rates can drop and can drop very quickly. Now, when this happens, the next logical thing that happens is that buyer demand may go back up. And we saw this in the global financial crisis. Now, the recession was over then, and it was over for several years. But once interest rates got low enough, everybody jumped into the market, and we've been on a wild ride since then. So the point is, while it's scary right now with where interest rates are headed and they're going up, don't worry. At some point in time, they will go back down. Where do you think mortgage interest rates are headed? And do you think we're in a recession? I wanna know what you're seeing out there. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to our free weekly email newsletter so you're kept up to speed on the latest housing market updates. And you're not gonna to wanna to miss this video where we covered where the median home price was in the past recessions as well. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates, and we wanna hear from you.